Um, um, they want to sell our house. So the owners of my rental house have decided to sell it. Wait a minute, can oh, we just sit here for a minute? Yeah. That's a serious family place for us right now. I know. We're sitting here like with all these mortgages and everything and everything is just piling up all at once and it's just, it's not happening. So I have to find another rental. His house. <laughs> Both Cody wants to go live on a double wide trailer out of the property, he's welcome to, but he'll be alone. Hey friends, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It is Friday, May 17th, 2024. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Well, you know, Cody Brown has lost about 75% of his income because three of his wives have left sister wives and all three of these ladies are now demanding that they receive their own payment from TLC. Cody Brown no longer has access to the family fund or the family bank account where TLC deposited the money for the show. And with his loss of liquid assets and liquid capital, Cody Brown is not able to make payments to wives to get out of their property at Coyote Pass. Now, the Coyote Pass snafu issue between Mary and Cody and Janelle has come to the culmination in this moment and I can now tell you why this property is still not sold, why they have not been removed and why Cody is in a world of hurt when it comes to Coyote Pass as well as the home that he purchased with Robin. Back in 2019, Cody and Robin had found out that their rental had gone up for sale and they needed to find a new place. And Cody was pushing, pushing, pushing for Robin to actually buy a house when Robin wanted to rent a home. Based on sales records and property information, I can actually tell you why Cody was demanding that they buy the home. And it all came down to, what is it? Taxes. Okay, so let's dive into this topic. Cody and Robin are going broke, and it's all due to his really bad investment strategies. So if you didn't see my video earlier this week, you, should, you won't know that Coyote Pass is actually not approved to be a property for primary homes. Rather, the trust covenants that he signed on when he bought this home as a part of the deed of trust state that he will only use this property for the purposes of commercial or investment purposes. Meaning, on the deed of trust, if he were to, now that he owns it free and clear, buy, do anything on this property for primary residences, the seller can come back and say that he did not fulfill the terms of the contract and seek to reclaim the property. This property is a lemon of a property, Cody can't build on it. And because of the way that he bought the properties and the fact that it's an investment and he's got all these other people tied into it, he can't sell it without taking a huge hit. All right, so Coyote Pass was purchased as an investment property. They have no liens on the property and the property has actually increased in value quite a bit. However, because it's purchased as investment, it means that the money that they would make on the sale will be taxed considerably as an investment property. And because it's an investment, they cannot avoid what's called capital gains taxes. Meaning if you invest in a property and you have money that you make off that investment, you owe the government a certain percentage. Capital gains on second homes and land can be upwards of 20%. And that doesn't include closing costs that you might have to pay to a realtor, which can be anywhere from eight to 10% as a seller. Meaning sales on this property right off the bat as an investment, if they were not to reinvest in new property would mean 30% of the money that they make on this would go out the door. So Cody can't sell the property that he jointly owns with Mary and Janelle because of capital gains tax. And how did I get there? Because I noticed over on Twitter, Mr. Cody Brown was liking a tweet 
related to capital gains. And I thought, that's strange. Why is he liking a tweet related to capital gains? Did some digging and here we are right now. So Cody Brown favored and liked a tweet and it was, he loves Ed, Edward Snowden. And so this is what the tweet said. Okay, so the plan is to force everyone to plow their entire life's earnings into real estate, but then nobody can afford to have kids. So when the boomers disappear like the elves with no one to replace them, Everybody ends up both poor and alone. So I have this, right? Mr. Satan, sir. Not exactly true, but okay. And this person that he liked the tweet of shared this post. Sprout right. They print more money causing inflation. So you have to invest in assets. They put a capital gains tax on those assets. So you can never escape inflation. Printing more money doesn't automatically mean inflation will increase. Just FYI, that's kind of a misconception. It can, but it does not always mean that. And if you do invest in real assets and real property, if you cash out that investment, you do have to pay a, a, a tax, which is capital gains. So, and the more you hang on to a property, the bigger tax you have to pay. So if he has property that he purchased for $300,000 in 2018, and today it's worth 148 or $450,000, that's $150,000 he's made, and he has to pay a chunk of that to the government. I'm not gonna bore you with tax laws or financial information here. All I am saying is that Cody Brown, if he were to sell property that he put assets into, like his income or money into, and he doesn't reinvest it, then he has to pay a tax to the government. The government allows exceptions for individuals that sell their primary homes, and they're allowed to write off a certain percentage of their gains that they make on a home of if they're joint, if they're filing jointly, they can write off up to five hundred thousand dollars every two years on property gains taxes. If they reinvest it instead of like cashing it out, they don't have to claim the capital gains tax. Investors are allowed to defer the tax if they reinvest. So an investor cannot automatically get away from the tax, but they can defer the tax if they take the money they make off of it and they invested in a new property. Cody has screwed himself because he put money into capital, he put money into, into raw land that's really gonna be hard to sell and is a lemon of a land with all of these restrictions on it. And he has placed himself on property with everybody else. He owns property with Robin, with Janelle, with Mary and Janelle. So he has four parcels where his name is all over it. The next problem for him with this investment is that when he signed the warranty deed with Mary and Janelle, he agreed to buy this property as joint tenants with rights of survivorship, meaning that each one of them is equally entitled to any of the equity that's made from this at the sale of the property. They all have an equal percentage due to them. For Mary, Janelle, and Cody, they all are on a parcel that's over four acres. And so whatever that were to sell for, they're each entitled to a third of the sales of that specific property. He's also on a, another parcel with Janelle and he signed the warranty deed the same way as well, meaning that Janelle and he have to split any money made on that 50-50. This speaks to why I believe Cody wanted to subdivide the properties into five because Cody is not on any of the property on his own at all. And because of the way that he has signed the titles with each one of the people, including his wife, Robin, he is not entitled to 100% of equity in any of the property. And I believe he saw people walking out the door and he wanted access so that he would have at least 100% equity on at least one piece of property. I know it's not a lot of cash given how much they put into this property, but I think that was one way that he was trying to secure some of the money for himself was to have his parcel by himself. Robin is entitled to 50-50 by the way that they signed their deeds with community property with joint rights of survival as married couples. So Cody cannot get out of this. Cody saw a window where he, I believe, saw women on the verge of leaving him. And so he wanted access to the equity that they were making on their homes in Las Vegas. So what he did was he got them all to agree to put their names on all of these different parcels. He tangled them all up together, which would make it harder for them to leave. He got them to put their money into it so that, 
Again, they wouldn't have the freedom to leave him if they wanted to. And then once he got there, I think because he had them so tangled up, I think he believed they wouldn't leave him. And so I think what he believed was he would be able to do what he had always done and bully them and bulldoze them to giving him what he wants, the money that he believes is his, because in polygamy, women are not allowed to basically have access to the money. Even if their name is on a title, the man will say it's his money. And so he probably believed, well, they'll just stay and it will be all mine. That plan completely blew up in his face in the span of a year when COVID hit and the wives started leaving one after the other. And what ends up happening is that Cody not only what finds that his income is lowered where 75% of the income walks out the door because I'm considering Robin and his income sort, sort of as just like one. So you see 75% of the income walking out the door. With that said, his income goes down and his net equity that he's going to make on the investment that he believes he's is the best investment ever also goes down considerably because he no longer has access and the ability to bulldoze women that are not his wives or his concubines. Long story short, Cody doesn't have the liquid assets to buy out Mary and Janelle. Otherwise, he would have, plain and simple. So because of that, he's stuck in a situation where unless they sell and take a big hit and take the tax and allow the tax to hit, I mean, there's worse things that could happen than having to pay a tax but Cody hates taxes so much that he will just sit likely and not do anything and maybe just wait it out until these women give in to him. But they don't, under the law, under the contract they sign, under the legal documents they've signed, don't have to. They do not have to walk away from this property in, under any circumstances. They are legally entitled with what they've signed to an equal percentage of the equity on the parcels that they own. Cody's issues with money are not just complicated in that respect, but then he also has this property that he owns with Robin. And in 2013, in 2019, when his rental that he had with Robin went on the market, he was pushing Robin really, really hard to buy a home. And the reason he was doing this, he said, was because there was no rentals. And that's just not true. There were plenty of rentals he could have rented. He just wanted to buy. Why did he want to buy? He had to. Due to the divorce that he had with Mary in 2014 and the way, the fact that he purchased property when they moved to Vegas with Mary while they were married and never divided the assets after their divorce and he remained on that home with her, he was on two homes in Las Vegas as primary and he was on a home with Christine as primary, meaning he was claiming three separate homes as his primary resident, despite the fact that that's not allowed by the IRS. I don't know how he was doing it for taxes, but from an IRS perspective, he can only claim one home. So Cody was listed on two homes where he was gonna be responsible for capital gains taxes if he did not inv invest that money into a new home. He would be allowed under the law to write off up to $500,000 on the sale of a single primary home once every two years. Unfortunately for Cody, he had two primary homes that he was selling and he couldn't write off both. So what he did was he put a fly up her ass and told her they had to buy because there was no rentals or that was what they used as the storyline. And instead what he did was when Robin's home sold in February, they had until August to purchase a new home before they would have to pay taxes on the gains that Robin made on the equity. February 28th, 2019, Robin House sells. They have 180 days from that date to reinvest the money or else they're hit with a penalty. So he has to find a house for them to buy. They were always going to buy. They were never going to rent. And even if this property owner hadn't sold the home, I'm assuming they would have had to buy regardless. By June, Mary's house sells. And so then again, he has money that again on the clock has to be invested into another property or else he has to take a penalty because of the divorce. He and Mary were able to split the equity 50 50. So when Mary says that she gave Robin 50% of her equity from her home, she's actually not actually telling the truth because Cody and 
Mary owned the home together. And because they owned it together and because they were married when they bought it, it was community property. And when they sold it, each one of them was entitled to 50% of the equity that was made on the sale. So selling their Vegas home is really what disconnected them financially from the mortgage that they held together along with the marital assets they shared. So what Cody did was he took the money he got from Mary, he took the money that they made with Robin and they put that into Robin's house, but they still didn't have enough money for their down payment. And so when Janelle's home sold that summer, they took 50% of hers and put that into Robin's house. I did a review of what the down payment was. They put down 222,000 and Robin and Cody's equity that they made on the sale of their place in Vegas netted them around 90 some thousand, 92,000. They needed another 120,000 or so for their down payment or 130. And they got that by his 50% with Mary that was his. And then Janelle gave about 65,000 of hers to Cody. So really they owe Janelle at this point, $65,000 or $70,000 for the money that she gave them for their down payment. They don't owe Mary anything for the home because it was his money. Long story short, Cody and Robin had to buy a house or else they would have been penalized with taxes. That was just a dumb storyline that they came up with to make y'all probably feel like there was, they were under the gun and drama for the show. So it might not have been even that they were fighting. That could have all been faked. And Janelle's the one that is ultimately the one screwed out of this entire situation because she's the one that's owed money still to this day for the down payment. And she's also the one that's going to be the most screwed at Coyote Pass because her name is on two parcels. And until they can find a way to buy her out, which they don't have the money because if they had the money, Cody wouldn't be complaining about property gains taxes. And he also would be paying them if he had the money. It's clear that they don't have the money to pay them off or they would have. And Cody can't sell unless he pays a huge penalty and he doesn't want to do that apparently. And then with the house in, that he and Robin own, they always have to have a house. So even though they have equity in the home, Regardless, they probably can't refinance to get money out of it because he probably can't qualify for a higher loan now because he's lost so much of his income because three of the wives left. So he's stuck. He's stuck in a house that he can't probably refinance to take out more equity to pay them off. So he can't use that equity now to pay them off. He's stuck on parcels with them because he can't pay them off with liquid cash that he has. And he's stuck because of taxes. All ways that you look at it, Cody and Robin are cash poor. And my guess is that when this show ends, based on how they've really floundered all of this money away, they will probably be bankrupt. I think the women will be fine, even though they've walked away with not a lot of money. And even though Cody and Robin screwed them, I think each one of the women will do fine and will not have the financial problems that Cody and Robin will have because one Janelle is not the type to overextend herself. She never has been. She's always been the most practical. Mary doesn't, hasn't taken on any new debt that she had already. She's just got the in and Christine is really the winner because she bought a house. She got her equity from her house and she owns a rental home now. Really the best person in the best financial position right now is Christine. Who would have ever thought that? She was the one that had never paid a bill before until they bought their houses in, in Vegas. All right, you guys. So Janelle is screwed and Cody and Robin are cash poor because of their bad decisions. We're going to go a little bit more detail about how Ro Christine is the one that came out winning and how she managed to do it. All right, you guys, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed and click on the bell so you never miss a video. And thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.